This video is going to show you how to apply Kepler's third law to solve orbital motion problems. But first, a little background. Astronomers measure the distance between the Earth and the Sun as one astronomical unit. It's one AU. Now if we put it in meters or SI units, it's a really big number. But we don't need to. Just one's a nice easy number to work with. It's easy mathematically to deal with. So one AU. It's a simple thing to assume. Now here's a little question first. Which of these are satellites? There's the asteroid Gasper going around our Sun. There's Saturn, Jupiter, the Hubble telescope, Space Telescope, a communication satellite, the Moon, and the Earth. Which of these are satellites? Well, as it turns out, they're all satellites. Gaspera, Saturn, Jupiter, the Earth, they all orbit the Sun. The telecommunication satellite, the Hubble telescope, and the Moon all orbit the Earth. So anything doing the orbiting is called the satellite, and what it's going around is called the body. Now, I know really the Moon, the Hubble, and this communication satellite also go around the Sun because the Earth goes around the Sun, and they're attached to the Earth by their orbits. But we'll just keep it nice, simple, obviously, uh, circular orbits. All right, so now let's go to the third law. The third law said that Kepler's constant is equal to the period squared divided by the radius cubed. The period is the time to go around once around the body, and the radius is the center is measured from the center of the body to the center of the satellite. Every planet has its own unique constant. So you cannot compare the Earth and the Sun if they're both the body because they have two different constants. Whatever orbits the Earth has its constant, whatever orbits the Sun has its constant. So in this diagram, I've got a body, and I've got satellite 1, which is artificial. I've got satellite 2, I've got the brown moon, that's a natural satellite. And satellite 3, the red moon, is another natural satellite. So they're going to go around the body, which in this case is the red ball. And then I'll have some distances, R1 going to satellite 1, R2 going to satellite 2, and R3 going to satellite 3. So if I look at the third law, what it says is they all re relate to each other by this, ra this ratio of the period squared divided by the distance between the objects cubed, t squared over r cubed. So if I look for the period for number 1 squared divided by the distance between the body and the, and the satellite number 1 cubed, they equal the same thing as the period squared for the brown moon divided by the distance between the body and the brown moon cubed. The same thing can be said for the red one t squared over r cubed. So all these objects, because they orbit the same body, are related. Now let's look at a numerical example. The planet Mercury takes 0.24 years to go around the Sun. That's 0.24 Earth years. What is the distance from the center of Mercury to the center of the Sun? Well, in solving this problem, I'm going to use Kepler's third law. To use Kepler's third law, I need two satellites orbiting one body. So I've got to figure out something else that's orbiting the Sun besides Mercury? Well, the obvious answer is going to be the Earth. Because if I use the Earth, I know its period of motion is one year. I know that pretty well because I've defined it. And I also know the distance is one astronomical unit, or one AU, between the center of the Earth and the center of the Sun. So that's our easy object to compare with. If I was comparing objects that were orbiting the Earth, I might use the Moon as my second object and use that data and then compare it to the artificial satellites that we launch in space all the time. OK, so back to our problem. The planet Mercury takes 0.24 years to go around the Sun. What is the distance from the center of Mercury to the center of the Sun? Well, I'm going to use Kepler's third law because I need two objects and I have two objects. From Kepler's third law, I know that all the objects orbiting have the same constant. That is, the constant between Mercury and the Sun and the constant between the Earth and the Sun, they're going to set up the same. So I'll set up a ratio using the third law. T squared over Mercury of Mercury divided by the distance between Mercury and the Sun cubed is equal to t squared of the Earth divided by the distance between the Earth and the Sun cubed. And now I'll plug in the numbers. And the units don't matter as long as they all match. So for time, or the period, I've got years. And for the distance, because I have AU on one side, that's going to be my answer also in astronomical units on the other side. So I'll do a little bit of math. And when I solve this for R, I get 0.39 AUs. So Mercury is 0.39% the distance between Earth and the Sun, or distance between the Earth and the Sun, yeah. All right, here's another thing. Now, this little table that's up here is on your handouts, a little uh, workbook that we've given you. So that's the table here in the red box. When peering through a telescope, an astronomer spots two planets orbiting a distant star. The outer planet has a period of motion twice the other. How does the distance to the outer planet compare to the distance to the star of the inner planet? So we're looking at a, somehow comparing the two distances. So I'm going to use Kepler's third law because I don't know the mass of the sun or any other information, but I have two satellites orbiting one body. So I'll set up my ratio, t 
squared of the inner divided by r cubed of the inner equals t squared of the outer minus r cubed of the outer planet. And then I'll put in whatever numbers I know, but I know this ratio. I know that one is double the other, so the outer planet's period is double the inner planet's period. Let's assume that the distance from the inner planet to the, to the star that it's orbiting is just one AU, so it's got its own special AU. It's not an Earth AU, it's just for the sake of this problem in ratios. Let's just call it one AU so it kind of makes sense. So what I have now is I have that one year squared divided by one AU, so that's the planet on the inside. The planet on the outside took twice as long, so that's going to be two years, for example, squared, divided by its distance cubed. Then when I do the math, I'm all set. I get my relative distance.